I know you're on this panel. It's the spending stupid, which obviously is a spin on it's the economy stupid. What's it's the spending stupid about? What's your what are you going to contribute to the panel today? Well, this is a discussion about our debt problem. The fact that our national debt is now over 15 trillion dollars. It's larger than our GDP. That's a problem. And this threatens to undermine our ability to fund everything from defense to entitlements. And this is a discussion about that. It's about the need for a balanced budget amendment, a constitutional restriction to change structurally and permanently the way Washington spends and borrows money. So let me ask you a little bit about the Tea Party. As I mentioned, you're with the Tea Party caucus. If you look at the Tea Party track record, it is just, uh, you know, since Iowa, all over the place. So Iowa, the winner of Tea Party support was Santorum with 29 percent. But in New Hampshire, went to Romney with 41 percent. But in South Carolina, it was Gingrich, and that was 45 percent. They went on to Florida, and Romney took that at 41 percent. And then the state of Nevada, it was also Romney at 47 percent. I'm almost afraid to ask, like, so who does the Tea Party support in this race? Well, of course, the Tea Party isn't a party. It's not any single organization. It's a spontaneous grassroots movement that stands for principles of constitutional conservatism. And, you know, there's, because there's no party structure, there's no single entity to get behind a single candidate. But I can tell you that conservatives... Right, in America but the question is, who's the, who's the... I guess, uh, forgive me. Uh, let me just interrupt you. I'll reframe the question because maybe there's a better way to say it, which is, so, so who's the true conservative that the Tea Party in general would like to embrace? Who is the true conservative? Well, we've got four conservatives, four Republicans running in this race. Uh, conservative Republicans are going to be eager to get behind whichever man gets the Republican nomination. And there's no real consensus choice at this point, but I have a feeling we'll have a candidate within uh, just an, another month or two. Uh, Senator, good morning. Ron Brownstein from National Journal. I can I ask you about your spending ideas? Because uh, many of the Republicans, and I'm sure your plan as well, wants to limit federal spending to a fixed share of GDP of the economy going forward. 20% is the figure often used, or 18%. On the other hand, the number of seniors in the country is supposed to double over the next 30 years from 40 to 80 million. How can we limit federal spending as a share of GDP while we're going to have that many more seniors who are going to be relying on Social Security and Medicare? What are the implications of limiting federal spending against that demographic backdrop? Well, the implications are that unless we limit spending as a percentage of GDP, we'll, can you, we'll continue to accrue debt until that debt crushes our ability to fund everything from Medicare and Social Security to defense. As I explain in my book, The Freedom Agenda, the only way to solve this problem is through a constitutional restriction. Uh, and, and that restriction will actually protect the very programs that you're expressing concerns about. That's why this is an issue that's neither Democratic nor Republican. It's neither liberal nor conservative. It's simply American. We have to protect our ability to operate the government. Did you just slide in a mm. promo for your book <laughs> on my show, Senator? Absolutely, I, can't I did. Believe the that. Uh, before I let it's, you go, it's a beautiful book. <laughs> <laughs> Shamelessly. It's America. Shamelessly. Uh, let me ask you. Um, uh, let, me, let me play a little bit of sound, which we heard from uh, Al Cardenas here at CPAC, of course, as you well know, is running the whole thing. Here's what he said about the importance of Super Tuesday. Listen. This thing's going to last quite a while. And if it lasts quite a while, it may mean, will likely mean that no one has those 1,147 delegates to win the nomination. If they don't, then you're dealing. And then if you're dealing, you're either going to come up with a combination of two of the four that in the race, or you're going to have an outsider like a Jeb Bush get in the race. Uh, you know, Mitt Romney's hoping that he can get this thing done March 6th. I don't think anyone else has the resources that could accomplish that. But if he doesn't, and it continues to be a wide open race, uh, things may get complicated. Do you agree March 6th is the cutoff, as Al Cardenas is saying? I, I don't know whether it's the cutoff or not. I think March 6th is certainly a critical date, and I, I hope that by that point we'll know who our nominee likely is. But I, I, I'm not ready to say that there is any specific date that represents the cutoff.